morning show right here on the Rise News channel. Right? Despite the inability of the federal government of Nigeria to provide potable water to a majority of its citizens, the National Water Resources Bill has passed the second reading in the House of Representatives and has been referred to as a House to a House committee. At the moment, civil society groups across the country are criticizing the bill, saying it will breach citizens' rights to water and insist that the ownership of water bodies shouldn't be vested on the federal government and that mandating Nigerians to get a federal permission to drill boreholes in homes or businesses and infringement of the inalienable rights. It will be recalled that the bill failed to secure a concurrent passage by a port house in the 8th Assembly to explore yet another perspective to this development. We're now, we're now joined by Adirunke Ige, Associate Director of Corporate Accountability and Public Perception Africa. Adirunke, welcome to the program. I mean, we, we want to talk about the whole uh, gamut uh, of this bill. Uh, we've read through it yesterday. We have many angles to it. And, and let me start with even understanding what this bill entails. And why is there a need for a bill like this? I thought we had a national water policy at some point in this country. Thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, thank you for having me. And I think that's a very germane question to ask, and that's the very place to start from. So now, you know, um, water definitely is a natural resource. It is a right, and it has been rightly declared so by the United Nations. Um, that was in 2010. And like you rightly observed also, we have a national water policy. <clears throat> now, like um, almost every situation in Nigeria, unfortunately, you have situations where there are uh, pieces of legislation, there are policies in place, but then you ask about the implementation, how have we fared? And you realize that it really has been nothing to write home about. Yet, you now see a situation where we want to have yet another piece of legislation or another um, law, in this case, a federal legislation, which is an act, and then you begin to look at the provisions and ask yourself again that are these going to be in the interest of the people? So this, the answer here right now, for instance, is apparent. It's a no. So we ask ourselves, what is wrong with us as a people? Can we make what we have to work already or even make them effective for equitable use of people? But then that is not what we have had so far. So you asked a question about um, the current bill that we have. It's uh, a purported one to regulate the framework and the management of water resources in Nigeria. That is, that is what it says on the face of the bill. In fact, the long title says, a bill for an act to establish a regulatory framework for the water resources sector in Nigeria, provide for the equitable and sustainable development management, use and conservation of Nigeria's surface water and groundwater resources and other related matters. So that's the long title of that bill. But by the time you look at the provisions of the bill and you ask, are they correlating with that long title? It's another question, and it's a whole new situation entirely. The answer is a no. Well, um, Adirunka, if you're still there, okay, you're there, good. But what are the specific aspects of that uh, uh, piece of proposed legislation that you object to? Yeah. For example, I saw on the screen now section two, subsection two, uh, but <coughs> section two, subsection one, of that uh, bill as proposed, says that, look, uh, all surface water and groundwater, mm. wherever it occurs, mm. is a resource common to all people. In other words, no private individual or company or community can claim ownership or control of water resource in any part of the country. There are other sections that mm. some people have objected to, like Section 120, Section 121, uh, which will require you to take permission from a national council on water resources that is based in Abuja. In specific terms, what are your own objections? Mm, thank you very much. I think the one you have mentioned definitely <clears throat> is one that stands out. So, first of all, um, you know, when you look at what this, um, this bill is setting out to do, like you rightly observe section of clause 2, sub 2, of that bill says there shall be no private ownership of water. So in other words, this bill, if it becomes an act, is going to uh, entrust all manner of control, every kind of ownership of water, regardless of the water body or um, the source of that water, to the federal government, in which case 
if you and I, as private citizens, are going to be uh, providing <clears throat> water for ourselves, which, first of all, shows a failure, is the failure of government, because if public water is not working, or if public water was working, I might not have a need to start to look for another source of water for myself. But then, that being said, it says that if you, as a private citizen, if I, as a private citizen, is going to provide water for myself, I will not be able to do that. It, it imposes every form of control in the federal government. So I'm going to need a license. So for me to drill in my compound, for instance, I'm going to have to get a driller's license. And we know what it means to get licenses in Nigeria. So it, it's not just that. It's also the aspect of criminalizing any attempt as a private citizen for me to help myself, to provide water for myself, be it in my compound, in my place of work, however I want to provide it. So it criminalizes it. And that's another thing that we have against the, this bill. It doesn't just impose a fine. It also gives an alternative of imprisonment, you know, for any kind of breach of any provision of this bill if it does become an act. Another issue that stands out is the fact that, you know, you see a clause in, in that um, bill where the commission, that's clause 24, the commission is not subject to any form of direction. So, in other words, you can't question them, you can't make inquiries, you can't even question the activities of the commission that is directly in charge of water. The only body that has the ability to do that is the Federal Executive Council. And then we ask ourselves, what kind of outrageous provision is that? If we are a people, and as we have said, power resides in the people, and water is supposed to be for the utmost use of the Nigerian people, why would I not be able to question anything that seems controversial or that I don't understand in the, in the works or in the operations of the commission that is directly in charge? Um, another thing that is of concern is the multiplicity of agencies. By the time you look at this uh, bill, for instance, you look at Clause 22, you see, um, yes, you see Clause 22, you now see all forms of agents, National Council on Water Resources, Ministry of Water Resources, Nigeria Water Resources Regulatory Commission, you see, you know, all of them. Now, we know about mischief, especially when it comes to legislative procedures, and this is another pitfall we don't want to fall into. Now, when, regu when um, um, regulations, management, and different fun functions are scattered within bodies and agencies and commissions and so on, what we begin to have is a kind of confusion. Not just confusion on, on the part of government or those agencies and bodies, but also on the part of citizens. For instance, I may not know who is even responsible for what, you know, as a private citizen. So that in itself is dangerous and is not something that we should hold on to. Another thing is the conditions of licenses. Now, this is actually outrageous, and I'll mention what I mean. So in a situation, you know, we talked about licensing. So in a situation where a private citizen, for instance, has gotten a license, rightly so, to probably, let's say, drill a borehole in his own compound or her compound, and then this agency can come on and say, you know what, your license is being revoked. And the only reason would be that you are not using water for a beneficial purpose. That is a clause in that bill. You know, you know, and in fact, when we saw that, you know, when I saw that as a private citizen, for instance, and then when we looked at it as an organization, we said, man, this is not, this is not correct. You know, who determines beneficial use of water? So water that I have helped myself to provide in my compound as a private citizen, now I am using it for domestic purposes, and then somebody comes as a, an officer of the, of the agency or commission and says, you know what, you're not using water for beneficial purpose, so we are going to revoke your license. That provision is in this law. And then we say, that is not right. There is another um, clause in this, in this bill that says that any officer of that of any of the commissions that have give, been given this um these functions or these duties can come into your compound it doesn't matter that they show reason for coming it doesn't matter how they come in now what the bill says is that as long as they are carrying out a function or a duty of the commission they can enter your compound and you know we know how that works in Nigeria. We know the state of security. We know how things are running. So by the time you give somebody such outrageous, um, outrageous, shall we call it a presence in another private citizen's compound, we know what can begin to happen. That is not correct and that is not right. 
that's just um, you know one of the many many trips that we can see in this bill. Um, another one would be general authorizations. In fact, let me read this out. It says that the commission may, subject to regulations made under this act and conditions imposed, authorize all or any category of persons to use water by notice in the Gazette. Now, our observation there is that citizens ordinarily do not need to notify the federal government or any other government at any tier with regard to water on private surface, because these are private surfaces. So what, in, in a nutshell, you know, when you look at all the provisions of this bill, you see an underlining mischief. It doesn't look like something that has been drafted with the interest of the Nigerian people in mind at all. It is full of mischief, and that is why a bill like this cannot stand. The federal government cannot automatically um, assume ownership of all surfaces and bodies of water. We are in a federation, for God's sake. So states will no longer have such powers or such powers if this kills. Another dangerous provision that we see is the um, is the celebration of privatization. If this bill scales, water is going to become a commodity, absolutely a commodity. In other words, privatization is being celebrated by this bill, and we know what happens when the private sector takes owner, ownership, takes over resources. Their aim is simple, it is for profit. Now, we have public water infrastructure, what are we supposed to do as a people? We have seen a situation over the years where money is not being pumped into the public sector, where public water infrastructure is not being maintained, is not properly financed. And what, what are we asking for? Is the effective management of public water infrastructure. It's very simple. Okay. If that is the case, then it will work. We shouldn't um, dodge responsibilities as a government and then put everything in the hands of the private sector. What happens is that people will suffer. Water will not be affordable and it will only now become a survivor of the fittest. In other words, whoever can afford water will get water and that is not correct. All right, thank, thank you so much for highlighting you know, the, the growths you have with this bill. Uh, but you said it's going to be beneficial to the people of Nigeria, the Nigerian people, you said. Uh, let's for a moment consider the argument posed along regional lines and agricultural development. Uh, Large-scale irrigation schemes, as we know them, are a very important part of ag agricultural development in the northern region, where the state governments in that part of the country rely heavily on the federal government to control water resources uh, through the management you know, of those schemes for the ag agricultural development. Whereas in the South here, uh, the people see water as their own, as a means of their livelihood. And they also feel that uh, you've taken oil from them, now you're about to take mm -hmm. water from them. What are your thoughts? Is there a one solution fits all when you look at all the states and these challenges of arguments posed as agriculture, the irrigation, environment, the northern, the southern region. Mm. Thank you very much. I think um, that argument is, is um, it depends on what side of the divide you are standing. But the divides here are very clear. It is either you are for the people or against the people. Those are the two divides. Now, this is the situation. You know, we've talked about oil. We've talked about other natural resources. Now, here is why water is different. You cannot begin to control water on a general scale, and then you deprive a people of the water that is directly produced in their area or on their ground surface or any other source where they are getting water from. Now, this is why there's a solution to this, and it's very clear, it is very simple. When you do commercial activities, there are regulations, there are options, there are alternatives. So nobody is saying that water um, for certain purposes should not be controlled. So for instance, when you look at um, the private sector and how they use water and uh, how water is being regulated, nobody so far is complaining about that. 
because it's, a, it's for the sole purpose of business. And business is for profit making. So that definitely can be regulated. This is the same, this is the same argument that was put forward when you know, we're talking about um, grazing and how land should be made available for everyone who has a head of cattle, for instance, to rear and so on. And the argument was, no, that is not correct. For an average farmer who does business, it is a business venture. Nobody gives them land free of charge to go and farm or to do agriculture. So all that already is controlled. So when it is business or commercial purposes, there's a measure of regulation and that is okay. But when, when you now want to go further into regulating every aspect of our human existence, what belongs to me privately, what belongs, what, what I get naturally from my source, you now want to control it for the purpose of benefiting another set of people. That is where it is entirely wrong. And that is what it is not, um, that is, is at that point that you will say this is not equitable. So nobody well, is saying <clears throat> when it's commercial purposes, you cannot regulate or manage or control. Well, when it is private sector, definitely. Sorry to interrupt Hello. you. We'll need to take a short commercial break. Please stay with us. When we return, the conversation will continue. Welcome back to the morning show here on the Arise News Channel. Still with us is Adirunke Ige, Associate Director, Corporate Accountability and Public Participation Africa. And she's been uh, helping us to do an analysis of the controversial National Water Resources Bill. Well, Adirunke, uh, thank you for staying with us. Thank you. Uh, if you may just complete your thoughts before mm. uh, we went on break and then uh, Rufai will ask the next question. Mm. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ruben. So the, the, the agitation of people that feel like, oh, now we are going to be deprived and um, we are going to be paying for the water that is being used in another part of the country is not unfounded. In fact, it is very much welcome. Because, you know, we have to also remember that the climb in which we operate is one where there has been distrust over the years, where people have seen how um, governments can totally tilt towards one side to the absolute a disadvantage of another side. So we are, if we are running a true federalism, then we should run in the spirit of federalism. So by the time that you want to control water exclusively, we know that certain people are going to be deprived. So why not leave the, the structure the way it is? Whoever, if a certain state knows the quantity of water that is available to them versus what they need to use water to do, then they can regulate in that part of the country, in that region, or in that state. But to try to um, curtail the rest of the country, you know, while trying to serve another part of the country, absolutely, it is inequitable, it is unfair, it is unjust, and it is not in the spirit of federalism. This was tried in the Eighth Assembly. Mm -hmm. It didn't sell through because, I'm just reading, you know, in a, in a Disney article here by Alicia Guadini, that he did, he did a great work on itemizing some of the areas. Take, for instance, definition of banks. You know, when you say water bank, mm. when you start to define things like, okay, so, okay about 200 uh, nautical miles, offshore water and things like that. Mm. And it didn't sell because it was very covulated. Now, I'm, I, correct me if I'm wrong on this, I'm not even sure we're going to be granted public hearing. Mm. On this, mm. how, how are we going to nick this? What's going to happen? Thank you so much. In fact, you know, a lot of things call for concern. And that is the thing, you know, in a legislative process, especially when you're legislating on a public interest issue, you must have a public hearing. Now, you see how um, this bill came and looked like something that was pro people in the Eighth Assembly, and how we quickly rose against it and said, look, on the surface of it, this looks pro people, but it is absolutely anti people, and the way it was immediately discarded. Now, the drama we are seeing is the way that this was reintroduced now in the Ninth Assembly very, um, in, in a very secret manner. So that tells you there's a motive. And now, we saw the disagreement, we saw the debate that was going on. In fact, it's not a debate, it's more of a controversy than a debate of how, oh, we are going to have a public hearing. No, we are not going to have a public hearing. How can you not have a public hearing? In the first place, you know, you look at who are the draftsmen and what is the motive, what is the intention that is underlining this entire bill? 
So who, in the, who drafted this bill? Sorry, sorry to cut you in. Who are the it's draftsmen? An, it's an executive, it's an executive bill. bill. Absolutely. So it came from the executive quarters. And you know, that, that alone calls for concern. You people, you can't legislate about people without the same people at the table. It is totally wrong. So when um, when the House Committee chairman on, on rules and business was saying, oh, you know what, because this was introduced in the 8th Assembly and there was public hearing in the 8th Assembly, we are not going to have a public hearing now. That is, that is not correct. Because every matter, every um, bill that dies in, in an assembly, when it is reintroduced, it's reintroduced de novo. In other words, it starts afresh. So this is an entirely new process and a public hearing by uh, statute, by statute, statutorily has to be held. So that's why when you see the way that the whole moves are going and it looks like something is really shady and you don't want to carry the people along, is absolutely wrong. And that is how you know that something is fundamentally um, wrong with this um, whole initiative. It well, is wrong and terrible, especially when there's an outcry. You have to listen to the people. Okay, I'll make a comment and then I'll ask a question. The comment is as follows. Uh, water is a very delicate subject because the world is experiencing water scarcity. And wars have been fought over water. Yeah. Mm. The six days war between Israel and its uh, Arab neighbors was also over water, over the, uh, uh, the attempt by uh, Israel to share out of the uh, Jordan River Basin. Mm. And the Arabs opposed it. And then they had a six, six day war in mm. 1967. I mean, if you want trouble with uh, Egypt, go and tamper with the Nile. Mm. Because the Egyptian will tell you, uh, no Nile, uh, no, Egypt. no Egypt. So mm. it's something we have to be very careful about. Absolutely. And if you look at the conversation in Nigeria, people are already casting it in a north versus south shape. Absolutely. Whereas there are states in the north, uh, like uh, Kebi, like uh, Taraba, that also have water resources. But here, the thing has become a divisive uh, subject. Mm. But what would be your recommendation? Mm. Will you be recommending to the executive arm of government to withdraw this bill because mm. it's so controversial? Mm. The leaders of the uh, Middle Belt, they are saying that this is an attempt to grab land uh, for cattle headers. So it's also been ethnicized. So what will you recommend? What will you say to the National Assembly, the executive that proposed the bill? Do you think that this is a bill that will just be withdrawn? Shut down the same way it was shut down under the Eighth National Assembly. Yes, this is what happens when you fail to carry people along in the first place. So the recommendation is very simple. You know, there are situations you see sometimes and you say, okay, this can be salvaged. Let's just um, withdraw um, A, B, C or remove A, B, C and then we have a perfect document. This is not the case at all. So the recommendation would be an outright withdrawal, recall of this document because it is not serving the people. It doesn't look like it was drafted in the interest of the people. And then we have to keep reminding our government that, especially the legislature, now um, law, legislating is one thing, lawmaking is one thing, representing, representation, which is another aspect of that work, is the major thing. You are first of all there as representatives of the people before even lawmaking. So that's what you, they have to always bear in mind. And the people always have to be carried along. So the recommendation for this one is totally clear. There has to be, first of all, a withdrawal of this document. It doesn't serve the people. It is not pro-people. So it has to be trashed, first of all. Then we come back to the table. We start drafting with wide consultations. Look at what is in the interest of the people. Because this is the point where we are even talking about integrating human right to water and sanitation in our national laws and policies, just as it was recommended by the United Nations General Assembly in um, 2010. That is what we should be talking about right now, not a way to commodify water again or to deprive people of water. You know, So that's where we are. An outright withdrawal, recall, or let's even call it a trashing of this document because it doesn't serve the people and it does not look good even in our public coffers. It doesn't look good at all and it can't serve the people. So it has to be withdrawn. Uh, very quickly, Adair, okay, do you admit that we do have challenges when it comes to regulating, when it comes to management of our water resources and bodies? Mm -hmm. uh, not just security wise, uh, Talk about water transportation, uh, portable water into the homes. Uh, very brief briefly, do you accept that there's a challenge that needs to be fixed? 
Oh, definitely. There's a, there's a huge challenge. And for me, where I see the challenge, basically, is the lack of interest or lack of will to invest in the public infrastructure. You know, I see a way that um, government tries to dodge responsibility. And that's why every little thing we want to throw to the coffers of the private sector and say, OK, please come and help us out and so on. So if there's a will, if there is interest in making the public sector effective, then we'll put the right investment in it and we'll do an effective monitoring and management. Whatever we want to work in this country, we have seen how government can make things work when they want it to work. So this is not an exception. Water is not an exception. Exception. They can make it work, but it's not by privatization and it's not by this bill. Government just has to be interested enough to pump the right resources. Yes. Well, thank you very much, uh, Adirun Kege, for the knowledge you've shared with us and our viewers this morning. I'm sure that the conversation would continue.